Hey everyone, April Dunham here. Today I want to talk to you about how you can create an Amazon Alexa skill that communicates with Flow to post a message to Microsoft Teams. Some of you might have saw the video that I did a week or so ago with John Levesque. In that video, I show how you can communicate with Microsoft Flow via an Alexa skill to return a list of your planner task for the day. I'll post a link to that video in the notes here in case you missed it. After that video, I got a lot of good response and feedback. A lot of people were asking, how can I take this and pass a parameter from Alexa to Flow to perform an action instead of just having it read back data? So I decided to take that challenge and I came up with a different scenario to demonstrate this. I don't know about you, but I do use Microsoft Teams quite a bit in my organization to communicate with my peers and clients. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if instead of logging into Teams and typing a simple message, I could have Alexa do all the hard work and post a simple message like, who wants to grab lunch? Hey, there's donuts in the break room. Don't forget to submit your time. That's what I'm going to walk through and show you how to do today. And the beauty of this method is you don't have to write a single line of code. We're going to have Microsoft Flow do all of the hard work here for us. So if you know Flow, you can get started building an Alexa skill in no time. But first, here's the intro. We're going to start with Flow first, since, like I said, that's really going to be doing all the hard work. If you go to your Flow portal, click New and Automated Flow. Click Skip here to get to the blank Flow building screen. And we'll do a search for the trigger. We want the HTTP. That's the key to making this happen because Alexa will be able to call this HTTP endpoint that Flow creates for us. And we'll use when an HTTP request is received. Now you might notice here that this is marked as a premium feature. And I'm not going to get into all of the recent licensing changes. You can read that and yourself and figure out the implications. Now notice when we do this, um, we don't have an HTTP post URL yet because that's generated after we initially save this. So what we're going to want to do, we just want to build out the base for this so that we can generate the URL schema. And then we'll actually jump over to the Alexa developer console build out our skill and we'll come back to the flow later. Now before we can save this we need to have a trigger and an action so we'll create a new step here and we'll search for an action called response. So now that we have a trigger and an action uh, we can save this and like I said we'll come back to this later on. When I click save that will generate here a URL that we can copy. Now I've already created this flow so I'm going to actually jump back over to my flows tab and show you the endpoint that I have built out here. So it'll look something like this. and It'll have your region in it. So you'll just want to click the little copy button here. And then we'll come back, like I said, to this flow later on. But now we need to go over to the Alexa developer console. You can create one of these accounts absolutely free. Um, so just go to developer.amazon.com and create your free account. Obviously, to truly test this, you'll want to have some kind of an Alexa device, although it does have a built-in testing mechanism that doesn't require you to have an Alexa device. But this is the main screen here, so you'll start by creating a new skill. You'll give your skill a name, choose a language, and then for the model, just select custom and provision your own for the method to host. Then all you need to do is click create skill, and that will create a blank empty skill for you to start building. Again, I've already did this, so I'm going to jump into the TeamSpot skill that I've already created. As you can see, that's right here. We have our skills dashboard where we can see the type of skill, when it was modified, and the status. So this is currently in development. And I can click Edit to go back into this skill that I was working on. Your skills start out with an intent. So you can click Add here and create a custom intent. So my intent here is Teams. An intent is just, what does this skill do? Now, when you create an intent, you have to map your intent to an utterance. And an utterance is just how you invoke your intent. So in this case, with Teams, I want to 
post to Teams. So that can be an utterance. And you can map multiple different utterances for how you might want to invoke this skill for Alexa. All of this is the same in what I showed in John's video. So I'm going to breeze past a lot of these basics and I'm going to get to the heart of what's needed to pass parameters instead. So you have your intent. Now if we want to pass a parameter, we need to utilize something in Alexa skills called slots. So if you look down here to the left, we have a slot type section. If we want to collect information from the user and pass that into our endpoint, we need to utilize a slot. A slot is just a way to hold data. The first step is adding one of these slot types by clicking the add button. Now you can define your own or you can utilize existing slot types that Alexa has in its built-in library. If you search here, you'll notice that there's already built-in slot types for different types of data points. So for example, here, if you want to ask for a date, there's already a slot type for that. So you can just select that one. Now in our case, we just want to pass in a message and that message could be anything, right? So we really just need a empty text placeholder. Now to do that, you'll want to use the existing slot type of search query. So this will let you enter in any kind of text you want and it'll accept it and pass it into your HTTP endpoint. So we'll select that and we'll click the add slot type button. Now I already have that added, so it's grayed out, but you would click that and it would add this as a slot type for us to use in our Alexa skill. And so that's this slot type here that I've already created. Now the next thing we need to do is go back to our intent and we need to map that slot type to a slot intent in our Microsoft Teams intent here. So if we scroll down on the intents screen, we'll see this section for intent slots. So in here, you just have an empty text box to create a new slot. So you can click in that and start typing a name. And I've already did that here with my message. So that's what I'm wanting to pass to our endpoint. We're getting a message that we want to post to Teams. So I'm just going to call my intent slot message, click the plus button, and then this is where in the dropdown you map it to the type. So I'm going to map it to that search query which will let me put in any kind of text that I want. And then once I'm done setting that up, you'll want to click Save Model to save your changes. And when you do that, you'll see your intent slot populate here on the left below your, your team's intent. So now the last thing we have to do here to get this piece working is click on our new intent slot. And there's some settings we need to configure. So here in the slot filling settings, we need to mark that this slot is required to fulfill the intent. So we don't want the user to be able to execute this flow that will post a message to Teams until we give a message that we want to post, right? So we want to make sure that this is checked to yes. And finally, we need to tell it what Alexa speech prompts will be inputted here to fill the slot. So for example, I say, Alexa, ask Microsoft Teams bot to post a message to Teams. That's my intent. That's what triggers my action. Then to get the input that I want to pass, I need Alexa to ask me for that. So that's what this speech prompt is. So after I initiate that, I want Alexa to say, what do you want to say? And I can have multiple of this, these speech prompts and it will just pick a random speech prompt for Alexa to ask me for the input. And additionally below, you can require that a slot requires confirmation. So if you wanted to verify the message before you sent it, you could toggle this to yes and put what you want Alexa to say back. So maybe like, are you sure you want to post? And the cool thing with this is you can pull in the data um, dynamically for Alexa to read it back to you. So if you do a squiggly bracket here, you can get your existing slot. So what that's doing right there is Alexa will read back to you the message that you just told her you want to post. And then you can say to Microsoft Teams. So that's just a safe fail to make sure that Alexa understood what you were saying correctly. 
and you can verify it, and then you could say yes or no to this, and then she will proceed and post that message to Teams for you. And after any change you make here, always click Save Model, and you'll get that success message if it saved correctly. And now like I showed in the video with John, to map this skill to our flow, that's done here in the Endpoint section. So in the Service Endpoint, you'll choose HTTPS, and this is where you'll paste in that REST Endpoint that we got here from our flow. So you'll copy that, paste that into here, and then make sure in this dropdown that you select um, that your endpoint is a subdomain of a domain. And then that will all work. So that is all that's needed on the Alexa skill side. So we can go back here and to test it, you'll need to build your model first. And it may take a, a few minutes here to build and train the model and all of that. So just sit back and relax. Great, so we see that that was successful. So now we can test it. It has a handy built-in testing mechanism here, so you don't have to try it out on your device. And you can either type in or press and hold the mic to train it. So I'm gonna just type it in so you can see here. Um, now, to know what to ask it to initiate this, go back to the build here and click on your invocation. This is the invocation name that I define, Microsoft Teams Bot. So when I'm testing this, that's what I'll type in. I'll have to type ask Microsoft Teams Bot. And then this is where I have to pass in what my intent is. So that was my, my ask Microsoft Teams Bot is my invocation, what tells Alexa what skill I'm wanting to run then I have to give it my intent. So if we click back on intents here, here are the options that I have and what I can tell her to do. So I'll take this one, post to Teams. So if we go back to test, I can say, ask Microsoft Teams bot to post to Teams, press enter. So notice she's asking me, because we set up that slot intent, she's asking me, what do I want to say? I'll type in, what do I want to say? Press enter. So that's that confirmation option that we checked earlier. So we're at, she's asking us, are you sure this is what you want to say? So from here we can say yes or no, so I'll say yes. Now she's calling the endpoint through Flow, letting us know that it was successful. Notice how we didn't have this configured yet, right? So in our Flow, we just had an empty response and an empty request received. So that would fail for you initially. And it wouldn't say, you wouldn't get this response back because we don't have that filled out yet. But we need to go through the testing phase because we need to capture this JSON input that she provides us and use that as our sample payload for the flow. So we'll need to go through this testing phase, have it fail initially, and then we'll wanna copy this whole input block and now we'll go back to our flow and we'll click the use sample payload and paste that in there. So this testing mechanism is doing all the hard work for us, letting us know that, hey, here's the JSON payload that I'm going to be passing to you so that we can consume this in our flow and get that message. So just click done here and that will populate with the JSON schema. And now from the flow side, so we're pretty much done from the Alexa side. Now we just gotta finish building out this flow. So we need to get the message value, right? So to do that, I just inserted a compose action that will hold that value. And this is good for testing purposes. So to, if anything errors out, you can check this and make sure that there's a value here. And I mapped that. You click in there and go to your dynamic content window. You'll see all the options here for your when an HTTP request is received trigger. And if you look at this, the JSON, you can tell that, let's just kind of scroll through this here. So I just know that we created a slot called message and hey, here's what I pass it in. So I know that my actual message is mapped to a property called value, right? That's how I know that. So we can go back to flow and so now I know that I need to look through these properties under my trigger and find something called value. 
There we go. And that is what will contain my message. So I'll map that to my compose action. Now I do have some inputs here for the team and the channel value. Um, I'm not going to go into that today. So my intent was to let Alexa ask me what team and what channel I want to post this to. That's a little bit more involved because you can't dynamically set that in the action uh, based on a name for a post to teams. It actually requires an ID. So to, to make it truly dynamic like that, it would be a more involved process of going out, calling the office graph to get the team and the channel ID. And I just didn't want to have to bother with that for this demo. So I just, these are just empty placeholders. But next we want to insert a post a message to teams action. And in that, so for this demo, we'll just hard code that to a specific team and a channel that you want to post to. And then for the message, we'll just map that to our message value output from our compose. So that's what Alexa passed to us. And finally, we need to tweak the response action that we had earlier. And we need to put in a JSON object to tell Alexa what she should say back to us once this succeeded. So this is how you would format the response back. And in the corresponding blog post that I have for this, I have this block of code here so you can copy and paste that. And the only extra thing you need to do is if you want her to read back your message again to let you know what was posted, you can paste in um, your from your dynamic content your message value. So she'll actually read that back to you and let you know that it has been posted to the ThriveFast channel. So you just save that and that's really all to it. You now have a fully functioning Alexa skill. So I've already tested this on my actual Alexa device. So let's look at this in action. Alexa, mm -hmm. ask Microsoft Teams bot to post to Teams. What do you want to say? Testing my Microsoft Flow and Alexa integration. Mm -hmm. Your message, testing my Microsoft Flow and Alexa integration has been posted to the Thrive Fast channel. Pretty cool, huh? And just to prove to you that it actually worked, here is my Microsoft Teams open, and there is that message that I just asked Alexa to post. As you can imagine, there are so many different possibilities that you could do with this. Since Flow is doing all of the logic and the, the work for you, um, you know, posting to Teams, creating a task and planner, you know, creating a new email, anything that you could do within Flow, um, you could make that into an Alexa skill. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one.